All right, today I'm making a quick video about the ELD on the Honda Fit. Um, it's also on a lot of other Honda models, but, um, so I was having a problem with the alternator only sitting at 12 volts. So I put new brushes in my alternator, which it needed, but it didn't exactly fix all the problems. Um, still sometimes my alternator shuts off and I think it's because of this little piece of shit. That is the Honda ELD. This piece of shit is designed to determine when the car can turn the alternator completely off to save fuel, thus forcing your entire vehicle to run at 12 volts off the battery instead of 14 volts off the alternator like it should. My opinion, this is just a stupid design and it's only really good if your car is brand new with a brand new Honda battery and a brand new Honda alternator and you don't have a stereo or anything that you've added to the vehicle. But over time, as your charging system diminishes and you add accessories, this thing becomes increasingly problematic. Uh, for me, it was cutting out. It was turning the alternator all the way off, and my battery was kind of shitty, so my electronic power steering was tightening up, and um, I was also experiencing a low misfire when it would tell the alternator to shut off completely, and I was just cruising at low RPMs. Since removing it, I haven't had any of those problems, and the vehicle is running great. Uh, I just wanted to note, uh, because I don't explain it exactly in the video. Um, so the first thing I did is I unbolted the fuses, pulled those out, and then you can either stick a magnet to the top of this, or you can grab the metal bar that's going through it and gently pull up and wiggle on it, or you can stick a flathead in there and gently pry on it if you want. I ended up not sticking a flathead for the prying. Once you get it up, though, you'll see the wiring connector will be right here, and you'll need to get a little flathead in to push the button on the wiring. Connect. So today we're going to be removing it and I'm hoping to find a better way to do it than was previously shown online. All right, so first things first, um, no matter which way you wanna take this out, it's held in by these two screws. So I'm going to take out all four of these screws so that um, I can remove these fuses out of the way entirely. Okay, got that done. So I'm just going to move these out of the way entirely. And if this works, you'll see here in a second. If it doesn't work, this video will never make the light of day. So the other thing I was reading... Um, the guy completely disassembled the fuse box to get to the connector on the bottom. But we're going to try a different route here. We're going to try to pull it up with a magnet. Let's see. All right, I'm going to try to pry on it with a flathead, I think. Oh, yeah. Just grab it and move it. Alright, it's pretty long, but this wiring harness in here should have some room. So, I'm going to continue to play with this. I'm going to disconnect the battery cable um, because I may want to get a flathead in there. You can get it to come up, and we're going to stick a flathead in there and gently press on the connector while we pull it to get it out. Alrighty, and that ended up being super easy. There is no need to take the fuse box out. Didn't have to pry on anything excessively so there was no damage. Once you get done removing the ELD, put that back in. All right, and now the moment of truth. Will the vehicle start? And will it start without throwing check engine light code? 
All right, so the vehicle is on. And just my normal lights. Man, it even feels smoother without that thing. Yeah, I think that thing was seriously inhibiting my alternator's ability to provide power to the vehicle. 